When we do mitzvahs, is it purely for our benefit or is it also for Hashem's benefit? Well, let's see. Um, you could be asking two questions. You could be asking a question about the realistic psycholo- psychology of people, ordinary people or, or exalted people, or you could be asking about how the Torah views the appropriate way to do mitzvahs, better ways and worse ways to do mitzvahs as a matter of value and principle. Um, the highest service of God, although there's some controversy on this matter, but this is, I think, the majority view. It's what the Maimonides talks about in detail in the 10th chapter of the Laws of Repentance. The highest service of God is to serve God out of love. As he puts it there, to do a mitzvah, lishma, which is sometimes misleadingly translated for its own sake, which if you think about it, is a very peculiar idea. I put on tefillin for the sake of the tefillin. Do they care? Uh, you know, are they being benefited for their sake? Golly, you know, when you do something for X's sake, X is usually something that cares and, ben- and, and, and appreciates what you're doing for X. And the tefillin don't appreciate it. Ramam dis- defines the shmo as out of love for the creator who com- the master who commanded that they be done. Because Baruch Hu, the creator of the world, commanded that to be done, and my motivation is the motivation of doing it out of love for him. That's the highest service of Gosh Baruch Hu. So now, surely that's not for my benefit. The question is whether it should be regarded as for his benefit. Well, let's figure this out. When you love someone and you do something for the one that you love and you're doing it so as to show the love that you have for the person, how do you choose what to do? <laughs> if I send a, a letter expressing my love for someone and I have it written, because I use Google Translate, in Swahili, and I send it to the person, I, I don't know, I'm going to get as a puzzled response. You know, this can't be coming from you. It must be an imposter, because you wouldn't send me this scribble-scrabble. You know, <laughs> why don't you send me something meaningful? Obviously, if you're doing something for someone out of love, it has to be something which you think the person wants, you think the person will appreciate, you think the person will benefit from. So it sounds like if you're going to do it in the most perfect way, you must be doing it for God's benefit. Okay, that's where your question starts, right? What do you mean doing it for God's benefit? What does he need that, uh, that, I, could, that I could do to benefit him? And the tradition puts this point in even more explicit terms, I would say, in a brutally frank way. The word chesed in Hebrew means a practitioner of chesed. Chesed loving kindness. The Talmud asks, Ezeu chesed, who is a practitioner of loving kindness? Hamis chesed im kono, someone who practices loving kindness to his creator. Loving kindness means to benefit. Now, the short answer to this question, there's much more to be done, and I can't do it now, it's as much longer, it's, it's tricky. But the short answer to the question is this. We think of God on two levels simultaneously. One level is abstract perfection, total independence, total self-sufficiency, and in addition to all that, beyond human conception and understanding, absolute transcendence, That's one way that we think about God. There's another way that he projects himself to us in hundreds of verses in the the written Tanakh, in the oral tradition, as creating the world for a purpose, having a plan in the way the the world should develop, (coughs) and um, establishing a partnership with us that the development and perfection of the creation will be the result of a joint effort. And according to this picture, that's what he wants done. He wants the world to reach its perfection through this partnership effort. Okay, if I now am informed as to what he wants done, so then I can act so as to do what he wants done. I can act to do it because I love him and I want to do what he wants done. 
In that sense, I am benefiting him. I'm giving him something that he wants. So, so would it be wrong to say on some level God needs us? Or? Well, first of all, to say, to say that God needs us. There are two answers to that question. But one, one answer is this. Why would it worry someone to say that God needs us? Because you think that needing anything would be a contradiction to his perfection because, as I said mm, two and a half minutes ago, perfection includes self-sufficiency, independence. To need sounds like you don't have enough for yourself and you're, and you're dependent upon something else. That's what it sounds like. If you analyze it, you could see that, that, that that's not necessarily true. Suppose I need X. But suppose I can freely create X out of nothing with no effort. So I do, and I provide it for myself. When we say I need X, am I thereby describing myself as less than perfect? I don't see why. Because in this, in this scenario, I'm not dependent upon anything. I'm not weak. I'm perfectly self-sufficient, perfectly independent. I need X, and I'm arranged, and I should have X. I arrange it on my own. I don't need to uh, have anyone's help, and no one can stop me. So then saying need seems, what we would call in Hebrew, parv. You know, it seems, seems transparent. Okay. For, for his situation, X is a necessary condition, but he's not any weaker because of that, because he provides it for himself. And of course, God provides what he needs by, by himself that way, for sure. The other, thing, the other thing, which is a little deeper, is this. i give you an example. Let's suppose that we're playing chess. I've invited you to play a game of chess. In the middle of the game, I take my knight, and I move it three steps straight forward, and I take off your queen. And you say, you can't do that. I can't do it? Watch, I'll do it again. Off with your queen. <laughs> say, but, 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 you know, uh, uh, that's not chess, you know, like... you. It's against the rules of chess. Okay, so what's stopping me now? What's stopping me now is my own decision to play chess. Given my decision to play chess, then I can't do this, I have to do something else. But that need is subject to my own decision. Not binding me, it's a consequence of something that I decided. Right? This whole project of, of creating the world is something that's rooted in God's will. It's as rooted as God's will. Anything that the project requires is something that traces itself back ultimately to his will for this project. So again, the word need there doesn't, doesn't indicate an absolute dependency or an absolute weakness of any kind. So that's two ways to, to handle a pro the problem of need. I mean, these are important things, but they're, they're like standard. Yeah. 